I want to thank Ronnie for inviting us over here on the, the 4th, of, 4th of July weekend. We're always excited to get to come out to big events like this uh, to uh, showcase what we actually do. As Ronnie said, my name's Mitch Whitaker. I work over at the Letcher County Extension Office over in Weinsburg, and we have a, a very unique 4-H program at our Extension Office where we take in these wild birds of prey, uh, hawks and owls and eagles, and the goal of our program, guys, is to actually get these animals back out into the wild. We have a veterinarian on board that, uh, that takes care of all the medical issues. And then we try our best to see if we can get these wild animals back out into the wild. Uh, we've been doing this for about 12 years now. And in those 12 years, we've rescued about 180 birds. Out of those 180 birds, guys, We've only been able to really return about 30 to the wild. A lot of times it's not always the happy ending that we're looking for. Sometimes when these guys come into us and they've got broke wings and, and missing eyes, those guys are not going to be able to go uh, back out into the wild. As Ronnie said, these are wild animals here today, so uh, uh, we can't have unexpected things happen, but uh, uh, there's no use for you to be worried. We do have these animals uh, uh, tied and uh, leashes where we can handle them and control them. How many of you guys got dogs and cats at home? Oh my goodness, everybody's got dogs and cats at home. I bet today when you get home, you're going to uh, feed them and give them water. You take care of them. You provide them shelter. Uh, you may even uh, uh, clip their nails and comb their hair. Does any of you put clothes on them? Well, you see, that's, that's not a wild animal. That's a domesticated animal. We provide everything they need. A wild animal, guys, is a complete opposite. He relies on, on his own skills and his own way of surviving. If nothing else, guys, I want you all to remember this. Four out of five, four out of five of these birds that I bring here today don't survive their first winter. These guys are all born in the springtime. Why is birds born in the springtime? What do you think? Exactly right. Exactly. It's perfect weather to raise babies. But you know what? By the end of summer, in just three short months, usually birds get as big as their parents. In just three short months. It takes us humans 18 years for us to get big. Birds do it really, really quick. And they're out that first winter all on their own to survive. They may be as big as their parents, but they're not as smart. And a lot of times, four out of five don't survive that first winter. Now, if they're able to survive that first winter and a couple more winters, then they become mature enough to pick them a mate. Once they pick a mate, guys, their chances of survival goes up tremendously. There's two of them out there looking for food. And if one of them can get uh, a rabbit or something that day, then, the, then both of the guys, both of them get to eat. I'm sure most of you married men out there today would say, you wouldn't have survived if it hadn't have been for your mate, would you? Uh, guys, today I'm hoping to uh, show you guys how hard it is for these animals to survive. It is against the law for us to have these animals uh, hunt them, shoot them, or trap them. Uh, these are wild animals. They wouldn't make pets anyway. It doesn't matter if I keep these birds 20 years. They will never, never, ever, 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 ever become a pet like your dog and cat at home. They will always have that wild tendency to take care of theirself. Guys, what if I told you all today that after the program, uh, we was going to load everybody up in a bus. We was going to take you back over to Letcher County where I'm from. And we're going to take you up on top of Pine Mountain. It takes about 20 minutes to get up there. Uh, it's about 3,000 feet above sea level. Once I get you up there, then I'm going to take you about 10 more miles on out to Little Shepherd's Trail. I'm going to have you so far out in the woods you don't even know where you're at. And then I'm going to open up the bus door and let you out and tell you I'm going to come back and get you in two weeks. Wow. Do you think you guys could survive for two weeks? I'm sure some of you probably could. Uh, it's going to be tough, though. Uh, it still gets uh, cool up on top of that mountain. If you're going to be there for two weeks, you're going to need food and shelter, uh, water and stuff. It's going to be hard for you to survive. But what if before I left you guys, I gave you some tools, some skills, 
some adaptations that might help you to survive. What if before I left you, I gave you a tent, a blanket, some matches, maybe a knife? Do you think your chances of survival would go up? Sure it would. It would help you to make it for the two weeks till I get back. Well, these birds that I have here today, guys, they have survival tools and skills that help them to adapt to the wild. And uh, it helps them to uh, get through these cold winters when we're in our warm house. Uh, these guys have special tools that help them to survive. So I hope today that I can demonstrate to you guys these tools that these animals have. I'm going to need a volunteer about this high. Okay. I need somebody that's not scared of animals. Oh, okay, okay. I need someone that doesn't care to get up in front of a crowd here and maybe speak and say something. Uh -huh. Okay. And one more thing, I need somebody that's had all their shots in case they get bit by something up here. Uh-oh, don't have too, too many left. You want to come help us? What's your name? Maddox. Mm -hmm. Maddox, thank you so much for being our guinea pig. I mean, our volunteer today. Uh, Maddox, what we're actually going to do, you're going to do great. We're going to turn you into an owl. Not really. We're not going to turn him into an owl, but we're going to give him all the tools and all the skills that Maddox would need to survive out in the wild. Are you ready? Okay. Before we get started, though, if we ask you any questions about surviving out in the wild and stuff like that we don't want you to answer us in your human voice we'd like for you to answer us in your best owl voice so before we get started let's practice on an owl call ooh, ooh, ooh. Do it. just try it real loud okay <laughs> that's that's okay maybe after we get him some tools and skills he might be able to let's see what's Maddie's going to need first Let's see, I know what he needs. Let me look in my survival toolbox here. And, oh, he can use one of these. He can use one of these. You're doing great, man. You're doing good. All right, now, uh, turn around here if I can see him. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to give Maddox is a camouflage outfit. Now, this camouflage outfit's got different shapes and different colors on one side. Presto, all he has to do with this camouflage outfit is turn around and he has a completely different set of colors and shapes. Turn back around. Now, how is a camouflage outfit going to help him to survive, guys? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, he'll be able to, to blend in with his background, won't he, guys? <laughs> he, won't buy uh, he needs this to help him blend in. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys, uh, he doesn't eat strawberries or grass seed or bird seed. You know what he eats? He eats lizards and snakes and mice and rats. And he gets all of his liquid, guys, from those animals that he eats. Maddox doesn't have to drink water. He gets all of his liquid from eating those wild animals. So his diet is a big survival tool. And this camouflage outfit, guys, may help him to sneak up on some of those prey. Let's see, what else will he need? I know what else you need. Now, guys, Maddox said that if we've seen anything funny here today, that he didn't care if we laughed at all while he's trying to show, show the program. Now, <laughs> you're doing good. Now, the first tools, these tools, guys, we see those big discs around his eyes. Those discs, guys, really aren't a part of his supervision. They're actually part of his super hearing. His ear holes aren't really on the side of his head. They're right underneath his eyes. So when he hears a sound, he looks in that direction, and he curls those feathers in to amplify the sound. Just like us humans putting our hand up to our ear so we can hear better. Well, Maddox is able to curl those feathers in I read in a book to where he can actually hear a mouse run under the snow while he's still up in the tree. So wow, what a survival tool his super hearing is. He also has supervision too. This guy can see 10 times better than we can see. 
He's, he's also one of those animals that comes out of the nighttime. What, what are they called? Nocturnal, yes. He's a nocturnal animal, which means he comes out during the daytime too, but of the nighttime, he has such an advantage over the other animals. So that's why he mostly does most of his hunting and activity of the nighttime. So he's got super vision, super hearing. He needs a super cilium next. You guys know what a super cilium is, don't you? Everybody's got one. We're just going to give Maddox a real big one. A super cilium, guys, is nothing more than a big overgrown eyebrow. Now, how would a big eyebrow help Maddox to survive out in the wild? Does anybody know? What do you think? Yes, very good, very good. Why do baseball players wear caps? It's to help shade their eyes. Now, as we said, he's nocturnal, but every now and then he comes out in, in the daytime, and if he, if he gets blinded by the sun, maybe a mouse or something will get away from him. So this will definitely help him one of those days down the road. All right, supervision, super hearing, super silly, and camouflage outfit. What else does he need, guys? He needs some wings, doesn't he? Well, we're not going to give him an ordinary set of wings. We're going to give him a special set of wings. These wings aren't just any ordinary set of wings. Slide your hand right down through that right there. These are special wings. Oh, you go. oh you're doing great, man. Now, what makes these wings special, guys? He's, he's doing great, isn't he, guy? Let's give him a little encouragement. You're doing great, man. You want flappy wings for him one time? Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, the reason these are special wings that we give him, I've got two feathers here. Uh, this is a hawk feather and a special owl feather. Everybody won't be able to hear it, but, but some of us will. Let's listen to the sound the hawk feather makes. Now let's listen to the special owl feather and see what sound it makes. What about it, guys? It doesn't make any sound. Wow, what a survival tool. He's able to fly through the air and not make a sound. If we was to look at these feathers under a microscope, the hawk feather has a straight edge, just like an airplane wing. So when air goes over it, it creates turbulence and makes a noise. The owl feather, if we look at the edge of it, it has a serrated edge. Where have we heard the word serrated before? Knives, very good. Some knives are straight. Some knives have little wavy scallops. The owl feather has those little scallops, which lets the wind go off of them much easier, and it doesn't make any sound. So, wow, what a tool that is for Maddox to fly through the sky and not make any noise. Now, guys, we've almost got him ready for the wild. What else does he need? He needs some claws, doesn't he? Well, it just so happens that I've got Maddox a set of needle-sharp talons. Now, these talons, guys, are needle-sharp. As soon as he gets a hold of his prey, there's no way they're going to be able to get away from him. Some of these birds have a grip and pressure of over 500 pounds per square inch, which could very easily hurt a human as well. Okay, guys, let's look at all the tools we've given him. We've given him a camouflage outfit with two different colors. We've given him super vision, super hearing. We've even given him a super cilium, guys. We give him wings that doesn't make any noise when he flies. And we give him a set of needle sharp talons. With all of these tools, guys, do you think he's going to have a better chance of surviving? Sure he is. But let's not forget, four out of five don't survive their first winter. Guys, let's give uh, Maddox a big round of applause for helping us. He did good, Maddox. I didn't want you to get too hot. Yeah, I'm starting to get hot. You did great. Just pull them off there. 
was getting hot, wasn't it? Guys, let's give him another big round of applause. Uh, guys, I think this would be a good time for us to let's go ahead and get some, one of these uh, uh, raptors out and let's look and see if we see those same survival tools that Maddox got when he was going to be out in the wild. Now remember, this is a wild animal. Uh, he may try to jump off my hand. We don't have to worry. But when he gets out of there, he's going to see a hundred eyeballs looking back at him. Uh, he's going to be a little fidgety. He doesn't know whether to fly or or go at you so let's all be quiet as we can and i will try to walk them around so you guys can get uh closer looks at them so feel free all the pictures you want All right, guys, our first bird is a barred owl, B-A-R-R-E-D. The reason I spell it is because sometimes we say these animals are barn owls, B-A-R-N. They're actually two different types of owls. We don't have many barn owls back here in the woods of uh, eastern Kentucky and southwest Virginia. But if you go about two hours either direction, you'll see more barn owls than you will barred owls because... They have more flat land, bigger barns, and stuff like that. But these guys are more suited for our wooded areas. The way he gets his name is, he's a barred owl because he has a bar of feathers that runs across his chest, horizontal. And that get, puts like a bar across his chest. So he's a barred owl. The easiest way for you to recognize these guys is by their solid black eyes. They're the only owl in our area that has solid black eyes and a yellow beak. These are very common birds. It's safe to say that there's one of these uh, here on the park easy. Have any, of, have any of you heard any while you've been up here to the park? Uh, the nighttime tonight, if you'll go out to the edge of the woods and you'll listen, you'll hear these guys. They make a sound that goes, um, oh, 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 oh. You guys heard those? Very common, very common bird that we have here. Uh, let's look and see if he had all those survival tools that we gave Maddox. Do we notice the big disc around his eyes? His ear holes are located right here and right there. Uh, he does have the same supervision that Maddox had. And these guys doesn't have as much as supercilium as some of our other hawks that I'll be showing you later. He does have the camouflage outfit. On the back, it's one color, and on the front, it's another color. He almost has white under his wings. But this is our most common owl that we have here. Uh, he's our medium-sized owl. We have the larger horned owl, and we have the smaller screech owl. But this is the barred owl. When he flies, he sort of turns like that, and his face is out in front like that, so he can hear sounds. Pretty neat, isn't he, guy? The ba barred owl, B-A-R-R-E-D. Now our next bird has a different survival tool that helps it. Okay, does anybody know what this is? A red tail hawk. How did you know it was a red tail hawk? How did you know that? It has a red tail. You know what though? If you would have seen this guy your first, his first year, if you would have seen him his first year, he wouldn't have had the red tail. He would have actually had a brown tail. Uh, his chest would have been completely white almost, and his eyes would have been really dark yellow. That's when they're a juvenile. That's their first, their baby feathers, we could call it. 
But remember, he's as big as his parents three months after he's born, but he has different colors. And we're able to tell the age of these guys by those different colors. You can even notice he's quite, got quite a bit of brown on his chest. His first year, he was completely white. If we see this guy in a couple years, his eyes will be completely brown. These are very common birds, guys. They're as far north as Canada, as far south as Mexico, and from coast to coast. Uh, these guys have a very varied diet, just like uh, Maddox did. They have supervision, but they really, guys, don't rely on their hearing. Uh, these guys rely on their speed. How many of you guys heard of the peregrine falcon, the fastest animal in the world? It goes over 220 miles an hour. That's pretty fast, and when it's going after its prey, uh, if it didn't have its special survival tools, it wouldn't be able to do it. Have you guys ever been riding in a car doing 50 mile an hour and you stick your head out the window? You can't hardly breathe, it's going so fast. Imagine what it would be like going 200 miles an hour. These guys have specially designed nostrils, nose holes that helps them to breathe even while they're making all these fast turns and stuff like that. Uh, the difference, I get asked a lot, guys, what's the difference in a, a falcon and a hawk? Well, the real difference is usually what they eat, and you can sort of compare them to a thoroughbred horse and a mule. The falcons are long and skinny like those thoroughbred horses. They go really, really fast. They're, they're flapping all the time when you see them, and they chase after uh, birds that they can uh, overtake. Hawks and owls really aren't that fast. They're more like that mule, and they're more sturdier built and got wide wings. And they're able to just swoop down on their prey. So a hawk and a falcon have different hunting techniques, but they still rely on speed for their survival. These are pretty birds, aren't they, guys? We hear them in the, sun, in the springtime. You'll hear them in the sky uh, whistling. Uh, they're actually, they're not hunting. They're actually using that for transportation. For one of these guys to fly all the way to Elkhorn, he couldn't do it. His wings just, he'd wire itself out. But he can ride on hot pockets of air called thermals, and he could ride and, and then glide some more, catch another one, glide some more. He could about go all the way to Elkhorn and not even beat a wing. So their survival tools is their speed and their ability to fly. Something else, aren't they? Red tail hawk, red tail hawk. Now our next bird has an even different survival tool. You gotta sneak, you gotta sneak him in there. Giving me a hard time today. All right, guys, anybody know what this is? Very good, very good. He's a turkey vulture. He does have the red head and he does have the black uh, feathers like a turkey and does have a certain blue tint to him. When we get to looking at this guy's survival tools, uh, he doesn't have any disc around his ears, uh, he's got real small eyes. So he probably doesn't have supervision. Uh, if you look, he really doesn't have needle sharp talons. He actually has chicken uh, leg, uh, feet like a chicken. This guy, one of his survival tools is he eats dead animals. This guy eats carrion uh, animals that have died. Uh, uh, he uh, circles around in the sky till he finds them. And then he eats dead animals. That's why he has a bald head, so all that stuff doesn't get in his, in his feathers. And this guy also uh, has the ability to uh, get a suntan with these big black wings. He'll posture up in the sunlight and burn some of those old nasty stuff off of his wings. 
But his big survival tool, guys, is his sense of smell. If you look, he has a hole that runs completely through his nose. This guy is able to smell those dead animals, and when he sees them circling around the sky, that's what they're doing. They're honing in on these guys. I read where these guys can smell, their, smell a dead animal 10 miles away. Can you guys smell McDonald's 10 miles away? Yeah. Ah. So that's a big survival tool for these guys to find their prey. And let's think how important these guys are to us. They're actually our garbage collectors. What if we didn't have these birds, guys? How bad it would be with all the animals around. We actually need wild animals, guys. Let's think about bats. Bats eat pounds and pounds of mosquitoes every night. If all of a sudden we lost all of our bats, we couldn't even come out in this program today. It would have been so many mosquitoes and bugs. Uh, we think about bees. Bees help produce uh, two, a third of our food that we eat. If all of a sudden we lost our bees, we would, we would lose a third of our food. These guys, they take care of the trash. Let's think about the owls. One family of owls in one summer raising their babies will eat over a thousand mice. What if all of a sudden we didn't have these owls and stuff anymore? We would be run over with lizards and snakes and mice. So these guys are very important to our environment. Pretty neat, isn't it? Have you guys seen these circling around before? Yeah. They got about a five foot wingspan. They're our garbage collectors. Wow, man. I'm going to try to hurry, guys. I'm afraid it's going to rain on us. All right, our next bird, guys, is the American bald eagle. This is our nation's mascot. Uh, in the 1800s, there was over 300,000 of these guys in Canada and Alaska and North America. By the end of World War II, their numbers dwindled down to less than 500. We just about lost all these guys because there was no regulations to uh, keep people from shooting them and hunting them. As a matter of fact, the fishing industry up north would give a reward to bring in eagle claws because they ate so much salmon. So uh, in 1972, uh, Congress finally passed the Migratory Bird Act that made it uh, illegal for us to hunt or shoot or trap these guys. Uh, I'm going to get him out. As again, guys, he only has a half a wing on one side. Uh, he, he, sometimes he loses his balance, but we'll get him out. Have your cameras ready. You good? You good? Yeah, good. There we go. There we go. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. That, that, doesn't he make a funny sound, guys? Uh, usually, you know, in the movies you see them and they're making that whistling sound. That's actually a red tailed hawk sound for Hollywood. Uh, these guys, I think they sound like a duck. <laughs> Uh, this is a mature red tail, I mean a mature bald eagle. He does have a completely white head and tail. If you would have seen him his first years that he was born, this guy, he had some black in his head and it took him five years for him to mature. He actually had brown eyes when he was born. And if you'll notice now, they've turned completely yellow. Uh, we named him uh, General Boone. He is a male and uh, we brought him from Tennessee and when he crossed into Kentucky, we thought about Daniel Boone, and he was getting to see Kentucky for the first time, just like Daniel Boone here at Elkhorn got to see Kentucky. So we named him General Boone. Beautiful, aren't you guys? Uh, this guy can never be released. Uh, he only has partial wing on his right wing. Uh, we were very fortunate to get this guy from the American Eagle Foundation down in Sevierville. Uh, thanks to their efforts and a lot of other eagle facilities, these guys are no longer on the endangered list. Uh, they're still threatened and protected, 
but their numbers have come up tremendously. But we just about lost them, and they're beautiful birds. I think Ronnie said we have seen them uh, here at the park. Uh, it's a good chance, guys, you can see all the birds that we had here today at the park. Uh, we knew he would never be able to fly or anything, so we thought we would try to teach him to at least to wave at the crowd. So, General Boone, if you would, would you wave at all these nice people? I think that the air delay destroyed them today. Okay, uh, guys, uh, uh, always when I try to end my program, I'd like to, uh, folks a lot of times ask me uh, how did I get started doing this, and the way I did it was by reading about birds and hawks. Uh, everyone here probably has a, a favorite pet or animal they like, whether it be a, a penguin or a turtle. And uh, the way you find out more about them is by reading and studying about them. Uh, this is a great little book that I like to read at the end of my programs. I read it to uh, kindergarten kids and college kids. Uh, there's a great story in it and I'd like for everybody to listen. And I'll hold it up so everybody can see the pictures. It says, once upon a branch, once upon a branch, there was a fellow named Little Hoot. Little Hoot was a happy little owl. He liked going to school, just like you guys. Just like you guys. He liked playing hide-and-go-seek with his forest friends. He even liked it fine when Mama Al said it was time to practice pondering. Let's all practice pondering just for a second. Hmm. Hmm. She said, next, practice your staring. She said, start to the right. Start to the left. Then stare back to the right. But there was one thing Little Hoot did not like. Bedtime. Ugh. He said, because when you're an owl, you have to stay up late, late, late. That's just the way it is. Here's little Hoot. He's over here. He's, he's got his blanket, and he's talking to himself, and he says, all of my other friends get to go to bed so much earlier than me. He said, why do I always have to stay up late and play? It's just not fair, he said. If you want to grow up to be a wise old owl, you need to stay up late, said Papa Al. And besides, I don't give a hoot what time your friends go to bed. Here we go to bed late. That's the rules of the roost. Stay up and play for one more hour, and then you can go to sleep, said Mama Al. One whole hour, said Little Hoot. One whole hour. So here he is again. He's got his blanket. He's talking to himself, and he said, when I grow up, I'm going to let my kids go to bed as early as they want to. So he went and played on the sword, with a sword. He played on a jungle gym. He, he built a fort and he built a pile of leaves. He jumped on his bed and he said, Can I stop playing now? Mama Al said, Ten more minutes, mister, and don't ask me again. So off he went and he played for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes. And he come through the door and said, there, I played for one whole hour. Can I go to bed? She said, yes, you can go to bed now, but wait. <laughs> Off little hoot flew and flew right into his bed. But wait, said Mama Al. What about your bedtime story? And Papa Al said, don't forget your glass of water, but it was too late. What do you guys think happened? Oh no, little Hoot was already fast asleep, snoozing and snoring and drooling. This is my favorite part. We're going to beat the rain. So they tucked in his feathers and they gave him a peck on the cheek and they all lived happily ever after.
Uh, guys, want to thank y'all again for visiting the park here. Want to thank Ronnie for having us. Looks like we beat the rain. Thank you.